that's what that is. Oh, holy shit! Ah! Hello, this is totally Mr. B Beast telling you about the iPhone 15 giveaway. Welcome back to the Rick Bison channel. Today we're talking about scams. If you haven't watched my most recent video on TikTok livestream scams, go ahead and give it a watch. But today we're talking about Gen Z versus Boomers. Who is more susceptible to scams? Surprisingly, three times more likely Gen Z is. This data is coming from Dolite? Dolite? Deloitte. I want to say do little, I just, huh? let's just leave it at that, okay? But since that data has come out, articles have popped up all across the web. But you have to keep in mind, Gen Z are online far more than boomers, so it's a big difference between the data set. Also, you have to remember, boomers have set their ways. The ones who are online already are going to be staying on Yahoo and Facebook and posting pictures of their, you know, little smelly grandchildren. It was funny because I looked through one of the articles and it was on Yahoo. Through the whole thing, it just kind of sums up how Gen Z is more susceptible to scams. In the comments, I have no idea what Anthony is talking about. He'd just rather die. <laughs> okay, so why are Gen Z who are so tech savvy falling for scams? It's easy to blame the younger generation for being dumb and naive, but that's disingenuous. But they don't learn through direct experiences anymore. Everything's so bubble wrapped, all the sharp edges have been shaved off. When they've only grown up with software that really hasn't changed in the last 10 years. Everything now with apps, tablets, phones, computers, is like toddler accessible. The days of troubleshooting is far less, and even if they do have an issue, they'll just go to the Apple store or a local repair shop. Safeguards have been put up all over the place. Online ecosystems are so convenient that they really don't think about if someone is lying to them. But for the older generations, for millennials, are rooted in not trusting anyone online. They all learned about Nigerian princes needing help. Dear sir, we have 30 million US dollars which we got from overinflated contract from crude oil contract awarded to foreign contractors in the Nigeria. Very classic. In the video game scape, trading was a lot more open. If you had an item, you can even drop it on the floor and people could just pick it up and take it from you. Give me your wallet! It was far easier to scam people into giving an item or giving gold and then getting nothing in return. The worst was if someone tricked you for your password, if you did that, that account was gone. Everything was... Everything was ripped out. When it came to downloading anything, it was far harder because on certain pages, for let's say if you're not legally in the gray area of downloading, you know, music or ROMs or other, other things, there would be like five, six download buttons and you would have to navigate which one was bullshit and which one was the real one. Using LimeWire and Kazaa was a gamble. You didn't know that if that Hoobastank album was actually real. It's only 20 megabytes. It has to be, right? You just gave your family Hewitt Packer or Dell super aids. Then it was either you who had to fix it or face the consequences with your family. No one online is gonna give you anything for free. While scamming has felt like it's been the same, it's only gotten better, which is a bad thing. People are trying to fish you all the time for your credit card information. They'll send you bogus emails, either it be Netflix or an Amazon account, saying that your billing information is out of date and needs to be updated. Is that people don't even check the headers. You can look on your email and to see where it's coming from. Look at that. Who the fuck is that? I have it through my phone service. I don't pay it that way. Almost all the time, that's a scam. And the one time, let's say, that does happen and you know that your credit card changed or moved or whatever, you don't click on that link. You don't click on anything on the email. You go to the official website and you put your stuff in and you check. And if it is, it is. And if it isn't, you saved yourself giving your information away. Another terrible thing is scammers using AI to impersonate other people. I have to look at this Mr. Beast video right now. It is insane. If you're watching this video, you're one of the 10,000 lucky people who'll get an iPhone 15 Pro for just $2. I'm Mr. Beast, and I'm doing the world's largest iPhone 15 giveaway. Click the link below to claim yours now. Holy shit. That's really bad. Like, okay, you can tell the AI voice is very synthetic. It doesn't really, it sounds like him, but it's off. The face, believe it or not, have gotten so much better on, on those deep fakes that you can do it in real time. That's the crazy fucking part. But you have to see the telltale signs. Synthetic ass voice. Just $2. Weird looking face. But the biggest thing here is a $2 giveaway. I understand Mr. Beast will just do these big giveaways and his videos and everything on his Instagram, but $2. Two 
dollars. Another big one has been job applications. People will just apply to a lot of different crappy jobs. Hopefully they can get something. And some of those jobs just take your information and then they'll start emailing you about a job offer. And then you'll go through the steps of like, yes, I want this job. You will either have a real job interview or you won't. It will literally be a email message and that's mail. it. Or they'll just black the screen out and you're talking to no one. Here are just a few signs to look out for. If the hiring process is far too easy, if you're only communicating through email and you never use their website, if the pay they're offering is way too high, if you can't find the job listing on their website, or if the job interview is far too easy or non-existent, if they're telling you that you need to pay for equipment or try to give you a bogus check, when they quickly try to gain your personal information, like your banking information or social security number. Give me your wallet! Crypto scams. Oh, there are so many kinds. The classic pyramid schemes, the classic pump and dump of someone, you know, selling you on a shit coin. They take their bag and get out and you're left with, it's worth nothing. You have to be careful of all those bad links with crypto too. One bad link and the crypto scammers can just steal everything from your wallet. The NFT one's pretty bad too. These projects promise you that they're going to go big and if you invest now, it's only going to go to the moon. You have to be careful about those PDFs too. Unsolicited PDFs will fuck you up if you don't know about it. Basically, they can put tiny malicious malware onto a PDF now. And if you download that, you, you just give them access to your shit. It's insane how something just so mundane can be dangerous. The landscape has changed and it's fucking terrible. And kind of just feel, man, you have to be extremely educated to protect yourself. All right, to conclude, if you're Gen Z or younger, don't trust anyone online, because you know what, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. This is Rick Bison, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.